What's up Bears Nation, Diggs Few here. The Chicago Bears just wrapped up their final training camp practice without pads. Yes, everyone thought that pads come on Wednesday, but Cody Whitehair said in his press conference today that the Bears are putting on pads tomorrow. And today was an extremely action-packed day. A lot happened, a lot to talk about, a lot to be excited about, and the defense absolutely balled out. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my most prominent notes and then doing my regular run through of all of the most notable plays from today. So just hang tight for my play by play breakdown but first and foremost Roshan Johnson dropped a pass last practice and he was the last player on the field after practice uh, getting some work with the jugs machine and the same thing today he was the first player on the field getting work with the jugs machine so it's nice to see that he owned up to his mistake and he's doing everything in his power to fix it and make sure it doesn't happen again. As far as the attendance everybody was there besides Don Dante Pettis, who's on the non-football list, and Chase Allen, tight end, who his reasoning was unknown. Outside of those two, everybody else was there at practice. The Bears had heavy special teams work in practice. They started it off with special teams, and they had a special teams segment in the middle. Tyler Scott was looking pretty comfortable fielding punts. He's probably he's probably going to get some looks in punt return this season. Javon Dexter, during warm-ups, looking pretty solid with his get-off. That was kind of a thing this offseason, but he's looking sharper than ever. And then last, like I mentioned already, Cody Whitehair said that the Pats come on in practice during his press conference interview. Now getting on to the action, one-on-ones was kicked off with a catch completed by Darnell Mooney and Robert Tunyon back to back, and then on the third rep, DJ Moore ran the route against Tyreek Stevenson, and Stevenson had great coverage, and Justin Fields threw the ball, and it was incomplete out of bounds. It's nice to hear that Tyreek Stevenson is finally getting a little bit sharper than he was last week, and kind of a hint, he does have another big play as I go on. Darnell Mooney ran a nice one-on-one -on -one route against Kyler Gordon, straight burned him, had a nice catch, and then uh, kept running after the catch. Tyler Scott had a catch after a physical jam by Terrell Smith on the line of scrimmage, it ran an uh, inside-out curl. Then DJ Moore easily beat Jalen Jones and finished the play all the way to the end zone. Chase Claypool won his one-on-one uh, -on -one against Jalen Johnson on an easy slant route. Jalen left some cushion. And then Robert Tunyon had another catch. He was just, he's really starting to stand out in camp as far as one of the most prominent weapons for Justin Fields. And then moving on to the one-on-ones on the offensive line, Justin Jones won one of his one-on-ones versus Nate Davis, Darnell Wright, and Braxton Jones both won their one-on-ones against Rasheem Green and Demarcus Walker. That's the only updates I have. I don't have reports on all of the linemen one-on-ones, but it's nice to hear that both of our tackles, Darnell and Braxton, are, are winning their one-on-ones. After one-on-ones was finished, the team moved on to 11-on-11s, and this is where the defense picked it up. Justin Fields was immediately forced to roll out of the pocket, throwing the ball out of bounds. Then Justin had a nice play where he went through his reads and completed a corner route to Chase Claypool, but then Jervon Dexter got great pressure immediately up the middle of the line of scrimmage. Justin Fields threw the ball intended for Chase Claypool. It was kind of a late ball, and Tyreek Stevenson jumped it and got the interception. Like I said, it's great to hear Tyreek Stevenson is balling out today because it was an extremely rough first week for him last week. So today he balled out and he's starting to look like the cornerback the Bears traded up for. Then there was another play where Jervon Dexter was going up against the second team and he blew through the line forced pj walker to throw a bad pass and that pass was intercepted by braylon trahan so javon dexter is getting pressure he's starting to look like a potential dominant force on the defensive line for the bears then the bears took a break and moved on to special teams and then they went back for another 11 on 11 session for a second time this time terrell lewis got pressure into the backfield for a tackle for loss on a handoff the defense line was getting tons of pressure and then Demarcus Walker got around the edge and had a would-be sack in a real game so the defensive line was getting pressure all day long and that's just great to hear because everyone knows that was one of the weakest spots on the team last year then the team broke and moved on to seven on sevens 
just gonna do a quick run through there. Uh, slant route to Chase Claypool. Then there was a corner route to DJ Moore. Another Chase Claypool slant. Then Fields hit Tyler Scott. Then Fields checks down to Tristan Ebner. Jack Sanborn was all over that one. Then Fields had another check down to Robert Tunyon. Then another check down to Kari Blossengame. Fields was getting the ball out quick, being very decisive with the ball, really working on his check down game. And overall, he went eight for 10 on seven on sevens. Then the Bears moved on to a third session of 11 on 11s, but this is where it got even uglier for the offense. Now I'm super excited about all of the highlight plays and all the great plays, but I'm gonna be honest and I'm gonna be fair and I'm gonna point it out when the offense looks like crap because this drive, the offense looked like crap, especially because the starters were going against the second team. The very first play, Lucas Patrick was under center instead of Cody Whitehair, so technically he was a backup, but he had a bad snap and Fields fumbled the snap and he had to scramble to pick it up and he threw that out of bounds but then the very next play Fields had a really great tight window completion to Chase Claypool and then he had another completion to him right after that back-to-back -back completions for Chase Claypool he's starting to look great so that definitely still things to be excited about there but then Fields forced a pass downfield intended for Tyler Scott and it was intercepted by undrafted free agent Braylon Trahan for his second interception of the day now I gotta be completely honest you guys, I've literally never even heard of Braylon Trahan until today and he had himself a day so I'm gonna get to a little bit more of him later on but the offense definitely looked kinda sloppy, pretty, had a, a bunch of mistakes today. It, it wasn't like they were super terrible though because Justin Fields was still hitting Chase Claypool, he was had a couple scrambles, had some check downs, he still looked decent, it, it was, it's not like he was looking incompetent, it's just a defense, the defense was really getting pressure they were forcing uh bad passes and they got three turnovers they had three interceptions today two against fields one against pj walker so obviously the offense can't win every single day you don't want your defense getting picked apart i've even had some of you guys in my comments saying we're getting worried about the defense today i would not be worried about the defense because they were balling out and then the starting defense came in against the second team offense and they made light work of them jaquan brisker had a moment where he dove for an interception onlooker said that he dove like five yards trying to get the interception but he just couldn't grab it and then Kyler Gordon finished off that drive with a nice pass deflection so the starting defense made no had no problem with the backup offense and even when they were faced up with the starting offense they're giving them uh they're definitely giving them a fair shot as well but then Justin Fields came back in for a final drive had a check down and then he bounced back from the interception and he threw a deep touchdown bomb to Equinemius St. Brown. So even when Justin Fields is down, he still picks himself back up. He is going to recover. He's not going to stay on the ground forever. So overall, it was a good practice for the team as a whole. A lot of sloppiness. Obviously, Eberflus probably isn't happy about a lot of the things that happened today, but not every day is going to be perfect. Not every day are we going to look like a Super Bowl contending team. It's only year two in Ryan Pohl uh, newly rebuilt Chicago Bears and overall there's a lot to be excited about now I just have a few more notes about today's practice Bears rookie cornerback Terrell Smith has been extremely physical at the line of scrimmage even a little too physical because he's drawn a couple penalties and holdings with uh, just being so jammy at the line of scrimmage but that's the type of guy he is he's a very physical guy but Tyreek Stevenson definitely bounced back and and proved his worth a little bit today. Jervon Dexter absolutely showing out. Guys in their press conference, Cody Whitehair and Justin Jones both had high praise of him. Onlooker said he was looking good, he was getting pressure. A lot to be excited about with Jervon Dexter, especially because the talk of the draft night was that the Bears passed on Jalen Carter due to off the field issues. So if Jervon Dexter can prove to be a very, very solid pass rusher in the middle of the defensive line, that's going to look amazing on Ryan Pohl's resume. And then Jack Sanborn was back at practice today, uh, a full go. He was the backup middle linebacker, and Sewell was the backup Will linebacker for the second team. I'm not really sure who the starting Sam linebacker was with the first team. But uh, Josh Blackwell, cornerback, seemed to be the backup nickel, so that's kind of noteworthy considering Kendallville Door is on a contract season. Haven't heard anything about uh, Kendall so far. 
and the defense is punching for the ball a lot. Heavy emphasis on the peanut punch. They are trying everything they can to get turnovers, which is just proof in the pudding for Matt Eberflus's hits philosophy. And then I want to give a little spotlight to Braylon Trahan, UDFA safety, because I did my digging into him after he had a two interception day. He came from Louisiana. He had four interceptions last season, 13 interceptions total in his six year college career. He was, a, I guess, a fifth year senior. I'm not sure if he redshirted a year or not, but he was an absolute ball hawk in college. And today he was a ball hawk in camp. So it'd be interesting to see if he can make the active roster and provide or prove to be a UDFA steal for Ryan Poles. Obviously, he's not going to be a starter, but it is going to be nice to have a valuable backup because knock on wood, injuries do happen in the NFL and you want to have guys like special teams, aces and so forth and so on. So he had himself a day. I figured I'd give him a little bit of spotlight and get everybody used to hearing his name. So overall, it was a great day of practice for the Chicago Bears. Maybe not an overly great day for the offense, but a great day for the team. It was a great day for the defense. A lot of stuff for Justin Fields to learn. A lot of things for the uh, linemen to clean up. I think there were some holding calls or false starts or just some sloppy stuff that needs to be cleaned up. I didn't really hear anything about any bad drops from wide receivers, so that's good. But um, yeah, pads come on tomorrow. We thought they were going to come on Wednesday, but Cody Whitehair says tomorrow. So hopefully we have a lot of action to talk about tomorrow because that's when things really matter when everybody is a full go. Football is a padded game, so tomorrow starts the real, absolutely real practices, and we have a lot to keep an eye on. So until then, feel free to subscribe, feel free to drop a like and a comment if you appreciate these type of videos that I'm bringing you guys. And in the meantime, if you haven't watched my previous videos, go ahead and catch up on those, and I'll see you guys there.